one thing I did hear, one thing I did hear about it for New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, the price. It was 60 euros, 60 euro entry for Berghain New Year's Eve Day Celebration Marathon. Re-entry price, bitch, you guessed it, $20. 20 euros, sorry, re-entry. So in total, you're probably looking at 100 euros to get in to Berghain, include, not including maybe the cloakroom and all your drinks and shit. That's kind of expensive, isn't it? And maybe that might explain why it was kind of not as full as it probably should have been. I've been reading a lot of accounts on obviously the Berghain community subreddit and a lot of people are saying it wasn't as full as previous years and people are hypothesizing that it could be because of the price. Now, the funny thing is about the price, I feel like Berlin people are really spoiled because we've been paying these type of prices in London for a long time. Most nightclubs in London start at like 30 pounds. Most nightclubs, even the shittest ones, start at 30 pounds. Now, 30 pounds to get in is nothing because you still have to pay for the cloakroom. You still have to pay for your drinks, for your little drugs you're going to get, food, the cab home. So you're still paying a lot of money to go out. Like most nights out, you probably are spending as a whole package, maybe 200 pounds. You could probably have a stretch if you want to and you bought yourself beforehand. You could probably have a £100 night. Or if you're really scrimping, you could probably like sneak a couple of drinks in some way and do a little 50 euro night. But if you're an adult with a job, you're trying to spend some money, you're probably going to spend £200 easy. But I think Berlin people don't, they don't really fuck around when it comes to spending money in clubs. It's not a thing that they like to do because I guess they're, they're kind of like, their times of raving is far more conducive to like, a normal way of raving than us they kind of open longer the usually i think they're, they're off licenses they sell even beer cheaper than us even their bars i think for the most part even most clubs i think burger and most you know the cheapest beer in burger i think it's like four euros five euros i don't think you can find a club in london that sells a beer for less than 10 pounds i swear to god i don't think so or less than eight I think most clubs have beers that start at eight pounds and up. But in Germany, you can go to a nightclub and have like a beer in a nightclub for like three euros. So obviously in that type of place, they don't take it too well if they start paying 60 euros for entry. So that made me stumble on this article, courtesy of ex -Berliner. That might explain why people in Berlin are a little bit shy and aren't willing to go to places like Berghain and pay 60 euros because, you know, it's just not something that they're ever used to. And obviously they have a different relationship with the clubs when it comes to money and stuff. And the weird thing as well, which I've read online, is that it's now changing the nature of the dance floor. You're seeing different you're seeing different type of people on the dance floor. It's maybe not as diverse as it once was because people are being priced out. It's really interesting. And they seem to be a little bit more steadfast. When they get priced out, they don't go. I think with, with us English London people, we get, you know, they, they they jack up the prices, we still go. E1, one of the worst clubs in London, right? Best London's but terrible club. They have extremely high entry rates. We keep complaining, but guess what? We go there again the next week. So we're a little bit full of shit. But let's see the headline because of ex Berliner. Cost of club clubbing crisis. When Berlin, when did Berlin parties become so expensive? Curse of ex Berliner. Like pretty much everything in Berlin, clubbing is getting more expensive. We could just pass off a simple fact of life. Prices rise. That's the way it is. Suck it up. With clubbing, the impact is deeper. Door entry hikes start to price out the very people who built up the club culture in the first place. Clubs in Berlin are rightly lauded for their sense of community and the way that they provide space for those who live more on the margins. When these people become unable to attend parties, they arguably contribute to the success of, then we can say clubbing is facing a crisis. That's very true, to be honest. And I think one thing to give London credit for, most of the parties that I go to, especially some of the parties within the kind of queer LGBTQ side of things, and the alternative raves they're really good in terms of always putting in their listings or in their descriptions that if you're somebody that is like down bad and don't have a lot of money or maybe your circumstances aren't that great please contact us directly and we'll sort you out so they obviously off, always offer that option. So if you're somebody that doesn't really have much money, um, then you can obviously get a ticket comped out for you if need be. And that's something that wasn't the case a few years ago. So I think that's a good thing that they kind of introduced to make sure that their parties are representative of their community. They're trying to, you know, of their community and shit. And also trying to make sure that everyone has access to their rave. So it doesn't kind of, you know, they don't exclude people, which is cool. 
It continues. For one weekend in September, Bergheim increased its entry costs to 30 euros, sparking outrage. It was only last year that the standard door prices rose to 25 euros. That's in addition to the increase in prices for drinks and a cloakroom. And it's not just Bergheim. The entry fees for many clubs have risen disproportionately to the average rise in wages throughout the city, with an average rise of 25% across um, the venues, according to Taz Spiegel. Not so long ago, Bergheim was a mere 15 euros. I remember that. And you wouldn't pay more than 10 euros to get into CC Foss. You know what's funny? I didn't think this was an issue until I looked back on my fucking pictures. You know that? I was checking my pictures. I was checking out my pictures on my iPhone and I saw because I didn't realize how often I went to Berlin uh, went to Berlin in like 2021 or something. I forgot. There was a year that I went like six times and I didn't realize. So I was looking through my pictures and I legitimately saw the rise of the ticket because I took pictures of my wristband all the time and I was surprised of like how quickly it went from 15 to 25 to 30. I think it within like 18 months. And I didn't also realize after reading this article that the cost of fucking, um, sorry, the wages haven't increased though. So imagine if you're living in Berlin and you're used to clubbing at like a 15 euro range, but your wages are, but now it's 20, 30 euro range, but your wages haven't increased. Of course, it's going to price you out because you're earning as much as you were earning when it was 15 euros, but now the entry is 30 euros. So you're having to double pay entry, maybe double pay drinks and other things. So it kind of really does price you out of things. And if anything, it kind of just makes you want to just change your lifestyle maybe and do other things. That's something I've realized too when I went last as well. I, re I, I quickly realized that it wasn't as full as it once was. Um, even just the clubs, the vibe outside overall. And I think maybe some people have maybe moved back home. Some people have maybe just, you know, changed and got different hobbies, whatever it may be. Or maybe some people have just found other ways to party. But the whole clubbing, clubbing landscape isn't where it once was before. Even in a place like Berlin that's always jumping, it definitely has kind of changed a bit. And maybe this is the reason. It continues. The factors for these price hikes are well reported. Minimum wages for staff have risen since um, the pandemic began and less said about the energy costs are better. Rents are also increasing and DJ fees are going through the roof. As to that other various costs and expenses, you've got a very costly business to run. That's that's obviously the um, amazing Sissy Foss that gets a lot of, it gets a lot of um, hate, Sissy Foss, but I actually like it as a club. And I think I like it more as a club now that I'm older because, you know, I don't necessarily want to go to Berlin all the time and always hear techno. As much as obviously it's the home of techno, I know, but it can be a bit boring to hear the same do, 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 do. So it can be good to go somewhere like a sissy fuss where each room, each little nook and cranny of it has a different type of vibe. And you might hear some house, you might hear some disco, you might hear some break beats, you might hear some drum and bass, some jungle. It's just a mix. And it's refreshing because sometimes a do, 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 harness, harness, Dr. Martin's jock shot, jock shot, jock shot, jock chest, chest, chest. It can be a little bit too much. So I don't mind Sissy Foss. It gets a bad reputation, but I think it's actually a good club. I'm not going to lie. Um, and I'm not saying that to be a troll. I actually do think it's actually quite decent. It continues. The collective Mensch Meyer recently announced that it would be closing at the end of the year due to the rising costs. In an interview with Groove, a German online magazine for electronic music and club culture, Jenny P, the club's public relations officer, stated that the Mensch Meyer's members and the staff couldn't even party at their own events because they were too expensive. This was the last straw for the club and they decided to close. Fucking hell. When your own crew, your own staff can't afford to rave. That kind of reminds me of like, you remember like, have you ever, I've happened to be a couple of times, have you ever worked in like a restaurant or like a bar somewhere and you, you know it's like the business isn't going well because the managers start to get really tight about food. That usually is a sign that the bar or pub you're working at isn't going well. They start to like tell you, okay, you can't make this. You can't get this for free. Um, you have to pay for this now. It's usually an indication that things are going fucked up when they start charging you for the fucking Cokes and shit. You're like, what? I could usually take these and now you can't take the Coke colors anymore. Type, little type, little things. That's obviously a good, and again, I guess a club, that's another indication of it when your own crew can't party there. It continues. Yeah, another sad chapter in the slow demise of clubbing in Berlin. The phenomenon is so pervasive that there's even a German word for it called Klub, Klubstabin, 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 which translates as death of the clubs. This year, Anita Berber closed for similar reasons to Mensch Meyer, to Minch Meyer, Mensch Meyer, and Fies Rimser will meet its end in November. What's the solution? 
Are high entry fees really the only way to keep a club open? At its core, clubbing is, or at least, about a community and creating a safe space. Um, increased prices create social inequality, excluding many people who benefit the most from these spaces. Hmm. Could it be argued? Could it be? Could it be argued, or would it be mean to say a great club does include some level of inequality? And social ex and in exclusion, isn't that the whole premise of like having door pickers? You're kind of excluding people. Yeah. So I find this kind of a bit rich because the whole premise of the clubs they have out there in in Germany is that in Berlin specifically is that it doesn't matter how much money you have in your pocket if you have the similar if you have the right vibe you don't click what we're doing you don't get what we're, what we're about you're not about the DJs then you can't come in. Okay, cool. I won't come in then. But now you have fucking what? You have your fucking club. What's that? Club, uh, clubs have been going on now. Now all of a sudden you're, you're struggling. You want the money, huh? So now what? Do ever, does everyone get in? Because it's clubs have been. Clubs have been means everybody gets in now, huh? Even the niggas. Even the niggas. Ah. To find better answers to this problem, we have to return to our roots. Yes, clubs need support, but beyond that, we need to start looking for closer to home. Booking more local DJs. Not going to happen. Um, expensive international names can be reduced. A club's um, overhead. Some Sorry. Booking more, international, booking more local DJs than expensive international names can reduce a club's overhead. Some of our favorite clubs were built upon having a strong roster of local in-house residents. Smaller clubs and club nights are able to grow great parties with just Berlin-based DJs. So why don't the clubs um, use the same approach? They don't do it because it doesn't make money. That's why I've long argued for that. I've long argued that we need to have a return to the resident DJ model where you'd have a core set of DJs that play Tuesday to fucking Friday, right? Every fucking week. So that you could build a community and a vibe around the club. You could also, quote unquote, educate the consumer to know what to expect. Tuesday to Thursday, Friday. And then on the Friday slash Saturday, Sunday, you have all the big wigs coming in from all over the world and shit. All the headlining DJs. But then you also have the residents fleshing out the rest of the lineup. So that you have the so then you have the ability to kind of let them learn during the week and grow and build as artists and DJs and then also give them the opportunity to play alongside big names on the weekend. But then you have the ability to have a local scene be cultivated and you have the international acts coming in to kind of bolster and add some money to the coffers. But clubs nowadays want all the money and want all the eyes. So the Tuesday to Sunday model is just having Big name of the big name of the big name of the big name, but unfortunately that isn't sustainable because there's only cert there's only all DJs for the most part charge a lot of money anyway, right? Most of them, especially the the higher up ones. But unfortunately, there's only a certain level of DJ that actually sells tickets. So sometimes these clubs are booking people who charge a lot, but they don't sell tickets. So you end up having somebody come in, um, you pay them a lot but then you don't make any money at the fucking door and you don't sell any tickets at the box office. So it's a fucking, you know, double, um, double fucking middle finger in that one. But hey, but for whatever reason, they don't want to give res the resident finger a go. Um, it, it should be more, especially in Berlin, they should do it more so, but I don't really know why that isn't the case. Um, it continues, some underground venues still manage to keep the door fees low. Oxy Berlin, for example, is operating on a donation-only basis for their in-house events, safe in knowledge that they're having the affordable open door, um, open for all, affordable for all, sorry, door price that brings regular covers is better solution than having a higher ticket price, but less people on the dance floor. Community spirit is then, it's thin on the ground these days, and it's better to club together than to push each other further apart i quite like that model i think that's quite cool oxy berlin having these in-house events right and then they have hey pay what you can afford at the door that's pretty much I, I like that idea if anything forget to pay what you afford on the door just have more in-house events and then obviously have the big big events with big djs coming in every once in a while but fleshing your entire lineup full of just big names is always going to end in failure really and truly for the most part because the fees are just too high and the ones that cancel tickets are few and far between and they just cycle through the same club so that's what ends up happening a club at fabric is a good example they try and do the whole thing of being more inclusive and stuff but unfortunately it looks like the the ones who really pay their bills are the same names you see all the time at fucking fabric and they can't not book them because they want to keep the lights on do you know what i mean so it kind of is what it is but i do like the fact that 
for the most part, people in Berlin, Berliners in general, don't take the whole price hiking ticket thing likely. You know what I mean? They're angry, they're pissed off, and they vote with their feet. And usually that kind of does bring about some level of change. They don't really put up with it um, because they're not used to it. Um, I feel like in the UK, we're just more used to it. Like, again, I'm, I'm used to legitimately used to paying 30 euros for most club nights, like even shitty ones. So it's not really that big of a deal for us anymore. We just kind of learn to kind of, you know, suck it up and kind of make it work. But I like that the guys over in Berlin don't make it work. They don't think it's fair. It kind of prices them out of clubbing. They usually change their interests and move somewhere else or move on to other things or they bring about some level of change through protests and stuff so it's good to see and hopefully we'll see a change soon but i don't think anytime soon because like i said the, this past weekend just gone bergheim just happened now and it was 60 euro entry 60 euros imagine and a 20 i think 20 euro re-entry for if i'm not mistaken let me just see the picture maybe this person here is actually showing this instagram picture but i'm pretty sure the re-entry fee was like 20 euros or something like that i think i might have it on here i think so yeah i think it was 20 euros re-entry can you imagine 20 euros 60 euros fucking crazy but still much cheaper than london i think london prices new year's eve i saw people paying 100 pounds to go for fucking some club so you know 100 you know 60 euros isn't 100 euros so you know count your blessings over there count your blessings